So in today's video, we're continuing our series on modeling the framing of a shed in SketchUp. So I know modeling roofs can be a little bit tricky sometimes with the different uh, slopes involved and things like that. In this video, we're going to talk about some strategies that can make modeling that easier. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so what we want to do is we want to start by figuring out what we want the pitch of our roof to be. And so to do this, we're going to use the protractor tool. The protractor tool is going to allow us to create guides based on angles. So if I click on the protractor tool, right here, then I mouse over this front corner, and I'm gonna go ahead and tap the left arrow key to lock this to the green axis. What I can do is I can set a base point by clicking once. I can click again to set a base um, starter point here, and then I can type in a number of degrees that I want for this to go up. So in this case, what we want is we want, um, let's say this is maybe an eight to 12 roof. So we're gonna have some decent slope on it, um, maybe a little bit more than we need, but we're gonna go ahead and go with that. So we're just gonna type in a value of 33.75 degrees. And by the way, if you're looking for those angles, um, you can find like a pitch and corresponding angle um, chart just by searching that on Google. Um, this one is from shedking.net, but we're gonna go to an eight to 12, which is gonna be 33.75 degrees. And so now we have this in here, so we know what the um, angle of our roof pitch needs to be. And I'm just gonna do this again right here so that we have two guides that intersect right in the middle here so I can see where exactly this needs to go. And so one thing we need to do that we need to kind of account for when we're doing this is we need to account for the thickness of our framing. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just going to go ahead and model out a two by six. So I'm just gonna model this somewhere along this line right here. I'm not really too worried about where just yet. So at the moment, all I wanna do is I just wanna model out this two by six. So I'm gonna make this five and a half inches. And then usually I find using the move tool in copy mode to copy this line is the easiest, but then I can close it in like this. And so what we've got is we've got kind of the base shape of a two by six right here. And so before I do anything else, what I wanna do is I wanna model out the way this is going to intersect with this corner right here. And so what I might do is I might continue this down just a little bit more for right now. And again, I'm not really super worried about the length at the moment. Um, I'll make it all to size in a second. But for now, what I wanna do is I wanna take this whole thing and I wanna move it down so that I can see how my framing is going to interact with my shed down here. And so in this case, for example, I can assume that I might notch this out maybe to like the center of this uh, board right here. Well, notice how when I do this, this still gives me the correct slope, right? So I still have the correct slope in here. It's just a question of how high above this framing this needs to go. And so in this situation, what I would do is I would just draw an edge in here to block this out. I'll erase out this extra, and then I'll just push pull this to the thickness that I want. So in this case, it's gonna be an inch and a half. And then I can come up here and I can figure out where this board needs to split um, in order to meet with the board from the other side. And in this case, I'm just gonna draw a line straight across here and straight across here. And then I'll just push pull this across like this. And then I'll just triple click on this right click and I'll make it a component. We'll just call this rafter. So one thing I do wanna do is I do wanna note that this is a tutorial about how to model out framing. This is not a tutorial about the framing itself. So if you are gonna build a shed, you need to go figure out your engineering or whatever it's gonna be. This is methods for modeling this. So all of you that come back and say, oh, your framing's wrong, probably. Um, but you can use this to model out what other frame, whatever framing you want. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode. I'm gonna create a copy over here. I'm gonna scale it to negative one. And then I'm just gonna move this back so that these pieces intersect right here. All right, and then we might, we might adjust this so that the overhang isn't quite so much. So maybe we'll have it be something like this right here, but then what we can do is we can come in and we can model the rest of the truss. So in this case, I'm assuming we're gonna have a central piece coming down and then a board running across here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to start from the center point right here and I'm gonna model out my board. And then we'll just push pull it. 
we'll make it a component. And then we'll do the same thing right here with our central board. And then we'll push pull this back. And then we'll just model some plywood gussets on here. So we'll model one here. And again, I'm just drawing the shape and then extruding it. Nothing special about what I'm doing right here. And then we'll just copy this bottom one. We'll scale it across to negative one. Then we'll just move it back over. And then honestly, I'm not 100% sure if these are supposed to be on both sides, so I'm just going to copy them so that they're both sides. Obviously, this isn't an engineered sh shed, so really we can probably make it whatever we want it to be. But again, you can kind of do this however you want. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode. And we'll copy this across, and then we're just going to take the whole thing. We'll make it a component, and we're just going to call this truss. So now we've got our truss in here. I'm going to go ahead and erase out my guides. I'm just going to move this back so that it's aligned with the edge right here. All right, so we'll get back to the framing in a second. I did want to take a second and encourage you to check out the SketchUp Essentials course. So if you want to learn how to use SketchUp, the course is my step-by-step, easy-to-follow resource for doing that. So we've got in-depth, comprehensive training that's going to teach you from start to finish how to use the program, as well as a community forum where you can interact with other students and ask questions, as well as our live calls where you can actually come get help with SketchUp live. Um, you can ask your questions live, and we make sure that you don't get stuck. So if that's something you're interested in, I would love to see you in the course at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and get back to it. And then we're just going to assume that these are 24 inches on center. So I'm just going to use the move tool in copy mode. So tap the M key, set a base point, tap control, and then type in 24. That'll create one copy at 24 inches on center. And then I'm going to type in something like times nine and hit the enter key. That'll create nine more copies of this. And then we'll just take this last one We'll just align it at the edge right here. So now we've got all of our roof trusses in here. And so from here, it kind of depends on the level of detail that you want to provide, right? So I'm going to take all of these, I'm going to put them in a group, and we can go ahead and we can label that group in the outliner. And we're just going to call this roof. And we're just going to create a tag, and we're going to call it roof trusses. We're just going to put the roof on the roof trusses tag. Now I can toggle that on and off. And then from here, like I said, you can do this however you want. You can either model out like the plywood on top of this and then like the felt and then the shingles, or you can put them all on here as one layer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do them as multiple layers just so that we can t toggle them on and off if we decide that we want to do that. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a sheet of plywood like this. And we're going to push pull this to whatever thickness we think this is going to be. I'm going to say it's three quarters of an inch. But then I'm just going to triple click on it. I'm going to make it a component and we're going to call it roof plywood. We'll do the same thing we did before where we make a copy. Scale it to negative one. And then we'll move it back like this. And depending on the level of detail you get to, you could also come in here. You could also come in here and change the way that this edge is shaped to make this come together. I'm just going to kind of leave it as is for right now, but we're just going to take that plywood. We're going to make it a group and we'll call it roof plywood. And actually I'm going to take my trusses group and I'm going to call this roof trusses. And the reason why we're going to do that is then we're going to take all of this and put it in a group and we're going to call it roof. So what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to take our trusses and put them on the roof trusses tag. We can create a roof plywood tag and put our plywood on that. That way we're going to be able to toggle these on and off individually like this. And then we can take our overall group and put it on a roof dash overall tag. 
and then we can toggle our whole roof on and off as well. And so again, from here, you can kind of do whatever you want, but I'm going to model out the felt paper. And notice how right now we get this kind of flashing on the surface. And so the reason we're getting the flashing is because this has no thickness and there's two faces occupying the same space. So we're just gonna give this a very minor thickness. Usually I do like an eighth of an inch or something like that. And then I just take the whole thing and I put it on a component. That way you don't get the Z fighting or the flashing that's in here. So I'm just gonna call this felt paper. We'll create a copy and move it back. We'll put those two in a group. And I'll show you why I'm going to the uh, trouble of doing that at all in just a second. But we're gonna go ahead and drag that into our roof group. And then I'm just gonna do that one more time for my shingles. And we'll just push pull that out to like 3 16 of an inch. And then we'll do the same thing. All right, so now, we've got all of these different pieces modeled out in here. Well, the cool thing about this is notice how I can toggle them all on and off like this. We wanna make sure that our felt paper is on our felt paper tag. But then what I can do is I can apply a material to each one of these. So for example, I can apply a plywood material. I can apply a black color to my felt paper. And for my shingles, I can actually apply a shingles material like this. But now, let's say we decided that we wanted to show the different layers of our roof. Well, because we have these in different groups, what we can do is for each one of them, we can add a section plane inside of it. So for example, let's say that I wanted to add a section plane right here. We could add a section plane to section out our roof. We could add a section plane to section out our felt paper. And then we could hide those like this. You can actually see the assembly that we've built. And then you could also create a construction animation with each one of those pieces in here because they're modeled out separately, which if you're interested in, we can talk about in a future video. So if you decide you don't want to see those cuts, then you can just go into view and turn off your section cuts just like this. All right, so I will link to the full playlist on this page. So as videos get added to it, you can watch all of those in that playlist. If you want to download the example files, I will link to that on this page as well. But Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.